Well, that was a lot of fun. Hello there, I'm Thomas, and today I wanted to talk about my cover of Chase and my music production journey, and maybe that will inspire you to make some music as well. The original song was composed by Giorgio Moroder in 1978. It was composed for the movie Midnight Express, directed by Alan Parker. It was really revolutionary at the time because of its extensive use of a synthesizer. The song really showcased and popularized uh, the potential of electronic music in mainstream cinema. I always loved the song and I remember being introduced to it by my dad when I was a kid. He always played stuff like Jean-Michel Jarre, Kraftwerk and Pink Floyd in the car. And that was a song that really caught my attention. I was always captivated by the melodies, the really retro vibes and the cool sounds of the song. Years later, with a lot more of musical background, the song really speaks more to me. I really enjoyed that blend of synth and rhythmic drive, especially the bass pattern. I really like the disco influences and that there is a bit of everything sound-wise in the song. I think it really demonstrates how electronic music can uh, evoke strong emotions and have uh, also narratives in it. And I mean, more of their influence, like a lot of musicians like Daft Punk, Depeche Mode, and uh, a lot of other ones. When I released the song, I wanted to do a bit more than what I used to do and just putting the artwork on a background which is fine, but I just wanted to do more for this release. I wanted to be a part of my horror story, but as I went through all my narrative ideas, I just wanted to keep the disco fun part of it, and I ended up telling the story of a big night out. So making a video music was really a big challenge because I'm really not a professional videographer. So I thought about using free stock footage uh, to make a fun challenge for myself. And after landing on the final idea for it, I scripted everything, the different parts, to guide the video search. So I went on websites such as Mixkit or Pixels, categorized everything by sequence, and honestly, it was the longest process to find a lot of good materials, because if you don't know that, stock footage is sometimes eh, not that great, and free stock footage, whew, that's not great at all. So to find something that could tell a story and that okay visually, th that was the real challenge. Also, I like to keep the story a bit open, so maybe you will uh, perceive it a bit differently than I wrote it. The production of a cover song was really a good exercise for me. It was fun to develop and use new techniques, uh, to use new instruments and plugins I got in the last few months and go a bit deeper with them to implement them in my future productions. So I feel like I really went deeper with Addictive Drums 2 and the special routing I use in it. Uh, Modo Bass 2 as well, Elix Native for the guitars, uh, and, and a few plugins for JST, like the Heat plugin, which I think is really fun and really great. Low Control as well from Black Salt Audio which is a fantastic plugin to keep you all low and consistent. I also had a lot of fun doing something a bit disco-like with metal influences. By the time I made the song, I was listening a lot to Rammstein, Architects, Periphery, that type of band. And I think that translated maybe a bit in the simplicity of the industrial type of guitar riff. And also the last time I really embraced the disco side of thing, I think it was for the Gloom Influx remix. Uh, I did the remix of his song Controller and I went really uh, overboard with the production. There were disco strings, uh, different types of drum machines, stuff like that. A particular challenge I found for this cover was the structure. I wanted it to be a bit shorter than the original, so I had to make some compromise and keep the parts I really enjoyed. And I ended up with a bit of an unconventional structure. But hey, I mean, it's dance music with metal touch, so I'm okay with experimentation, you know? And also, I didn't put a guitar solo on that song. But there is a four-part metal break, so I'm okay with that. The metal break is made of uh, four different parts uh, that play a bit around the tempo. And the last part could be considered a guitar solo, but I mean, it's just the bass sequence. That's probably the only part that obviously doesn't exist in the original song. So I had a lot of fun and took more freedom in that section. I also wanted to do a big shout out to another version of the cover. Uh, it's made by Kebu. Please, please go watch it. It's just 
awesome, it's fun to watch. You can see the guy just having fun playing it. I'll put a link for the video in the description. I stumbled upon it on a YouTube video rabbit hole session, and I think his live version uh, really triggered my desire to make the cover I made. So yeah, go check it out. Uh, the prelude he made to the song is also really epic. Yeah, covers are fun. Maybe I should do another one. Maybe there's another classic theme track you want me to do sometimes? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, it was fun to do a cover I had in mind for a while. It was also a great exercise I hadn't do for a long, long time. And also I really enjoyed sharing the process with you on video. If you're interested in that and haven't watched them already, I have some videos with the full production breakdown for the song. If that's not done already, please check out the music video and the guitar playthrough of the song. Let me know what you think in the comments, if there are some stuff you would like to see in the future. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to not miss the next musical adventures. Thank you so much for watching, see you later.